For everyone who doesn't want spoilers, my spoiler-free review of The Life and Suffering of Sir Bronte is... I did not like the game. I would not recommend buying it, even if you're a fan of story-heavy, choice-driven games like this. Everyone else who doesn't mind some spoilers, here we go. The story of my life remains written on these pages. But my fate has always been my own. Every deed, every choice, every person I met made me what I am. Could I have taken a different path? Could I have found a different calling? Altered the very course of history? And what price would I have to pay? So, just to set the stage here, here's the setting of this game's world. Everyone worships the twin gods, the elder and the younger. People interpreted the god's will by living in accordance with one's lot. If you are born of a noble bloodline, your lot is to rule, create, and govern. If you're born of common blood, your lot is to suffer, to toil all of your life for the benefit of those of noble blood, and you better do it with a smile on your face too, because in this world, commoners are little better than trash. In this world, the gods have also given each person a total of four deaths, your first three being called lesser deaths, with your final fourth death being called true death. Your character, Sir Bronte, was born to a noble father but a commoner mother, so unfortunately for you, people look at you as a commoner, at first. There's so much disregard and pure distaste for the commoners by the nobles of this world, they're so unreasonably harsh, it's almost stupidly funny. My character himself as a six-year-old got his skull caved in and killed by his own noble grandfather for kicking him in the shin. I was expecting, you know, like a hard step on the ass, maybe like a belt at worst, but that motherfucker just caved my head in. When you die a lesser death, your body disappears, and in your family's case, you respawn at your family's ancestral tombs. My mom was like, what the fuck? How could you let your grandfather kill your grandson like that? A lesser death at six years old? And my dad was just like, eh, grandfather's a noble, what do you want me to do? Commoners get ran over and killed by noble horse carriages because they can't be bothered to slow down. Get their stores burned and looted by drunk nobles just because they can. People of the common lot just get so egregiously shit on. The course of the story has no other way but to go towards revolution. Nothing else would make sense here. So your job as the player is to make choices for Sir Bronte, following him from birth to true death, and see what kind of role he will play in this coming revolution. There are three main life choices that you can play out. That of a nobleman of the noble lot, a commoner with the commoner's lot, or a priest to spread the word of the twin gods. Each of these paths you choose whether to side with the nobility and keep the status quo, or the revolutionaries to free the commoners of their lot and give them freedom to live as they please. I did three run-throughs of the game as a commoner, noble, and priest, all on the revolutionary side. You have the option of turning on or off seeing what consequences of your actions will be before you select a choice, including if your choice will end up getting you killed and using a life. In fact, the game will spoil major paths the story can take right at the beginning of a chapter, right in front of your face. And that pissed me off, they're spoiling shit for me and I haven't even started the chapter yet. And what's worse, they'll show you the requirements to get these choices too, and that may make you make decisions you otherwise wouldn't have naturally, just to get a particularly desired outcome. But during my first two playthroughs of the game, I played with having your consequences show to you off, because I figured the game would be more fun that way. But those first two playthroughs, as a commoner and nobleman, I suffered true death before I even reached the climax of the story, the open revolution itself. And true death has stupid rules. Apparently, getting shot, stabbed, or your head caved in by grandpa counts as a lesser death, but getting hanged or burned once counts as a true death for some reason. I suffered the true death in my commoner run right before the climax by getting hanged, but I died only twice beforehand. I still had one more respawn, damn it. 
but the game cheated me and true deathed me anyways. But I will admit I fucked up so badly by then. My family severed all ties with each other. Our name was in ruins. I lost all my allies and was fleeing the city for my life, but still, I did have that one more respawn. In my head cannon, they just spawn camped me to death, I guess. My noble playthrough again, I was killed right before the revolution began in earnest. Having that consequences shown option turned off got me killed too many times. I thought decisions I made earlier with swordsmanship training and sparring a lot would help me a little here to survive, but no. Some of those choices will get you killed no matter what. There are stats in this game like cunning, valor, and diplomacy and they raise or lower depending on the choices you make. Some decisions will be locked off to you if your stats are low, and during my poor poor commoner run, again playing without consequences turned on, just going by what I thought was the right choice for me to make without any stat gains in mind, I ended up with so many options locked off to me at the end I had no choice but to suffer and die a worthless death. But I think this locking off choices based on stats is bad for a game like this. I think it would have been much better and more enjoyable if they kept all the choices unlocked to you and just allow you to form your own destiny based off what you think is the best choice, not because you don't have the stats for a choice. I think Witcher 3 is the best example for this. They give you the freedom to pick and choose what you want and you'll deal with the consequences come what may. But in the game, too many times I was locked out of a decision that I would have personally done and would have happily enjoyed the consequences of that option had I been given the freedom to make it, but I was locked off because of low stats and boy did it take me out of the story. So my third playthrough is The Priest. I decided fuck it. I will make it to this damn revolution. I'm going to play with consequences on and just beef up my stats. I don't give a fuck about how I affect another character in the story with my actions anymore. The only thing that matters to me now is buffing up my stats so I can see an ending to this damn game. So here are the highlights of my Priest playthrough. What fun. I think the impatience I felt waiting for these pages to turn, looking at these animations, and load the text so I can spam the next arrow, was greater than any other emotion the story tried to stir from me. Well done, game. As for the ending I got, even with my priest buffed up stats, I still was locked out of choices that I would have liked to do, but didn't have the stats for. And my overall ending was yes. Finally, the revolution succeeded. But my family all got murdered, my city destroyed, and they turned the world to ash in their victory. I was just sitting there and I was just like, ah, oh, fuck this!